Ooh, that looks tasty. Tell me, nobles, which of you shall say you love our person most? That we are largest bounty may extend where nature doth with merit challenge. Speak. Your Majesty, my land has the best cropland, and I have a bevy of serfs ready to do your bidding, and I also have so many beasts of burden. Your Majesty, he may have serfs and croplands. But the most important thing is, look at how good my calf muscles look in these tights. <laughs> Welcome folks, Day the Hungry Gamer is back with another Kickstarter preview. And today we are talking about Feudal Endeavor, designed by Andrew Zimdahl, illustrations by Alyssa Fernandez and Jared Sanford, and published by I Will Never Grow Up. Games. At its core, what this is is a bidding game that also utilizes some tile placement as you are building out your fief. And the purpose behind the game is you are doing your very best to become the most favored of the Emperor of Russia, Catherine the Great, as you build up your fiefs and keep her happy and honor her wishes and blah 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 blah. Now, if you are not interested in how this game is played, and just want to jump back to my final thoughts, then you want to advance to the timestamp on the screen right now. For those of us still here, let's talk about what you're seeing in front of you. Now, I'm going to kind of do this in two parts. I'm going to explain everything that's here, then I'm actually going to put a player board out just because it doesn't really fit well on my camera angle, but I think it'll work out just fine. First off, every player will have one of these, this little player screen, which is how you're going to be able to hide your bids, and I will show you how the bids work when I get the other player board out. But let's talk about how the how each round's going to work. And what's happening is you're playing through rounds over and over until somebody manages to fill up their player board. And you'll see how that works later on. So what's going to happen is you will have various resources, which can be serfs, it can be money, though technically that's not considered a resource. We'll talk about that later. You can have hussars, and you can have horses. All of those you can use to bid on various things. And to start each turn is you will bid on everything that is out on the board. And what you can bid on are you can bid on new land deeds. You'll see I have this game set for three players, so it stops here to start. You can And you can bid on special abilities. And this one's actually a starting deed. That shouldn't be there. Let me take that out and put something new out. What's going to happen is at the top corner of each deed that you're bidding on, you'll see it tells you what items you can actually bid for something. And so as you're bidding, each thing that you bid has a different value. So for example, a surf is worth two coins, while a horse is worth three coins, a husser is worth five coins. So obviously, if someone bids one coin, someone else bids one surf, the person who bid the surf will win. However, if someone else bid one horse, the person who bid the horse would win. If someone bid one husser, the person who bid the husser would win. And you can combine those however you want. And this is just the key to tally up how much your bid is actually worth at the end. The other thing that you're going to be able to do is, as you look at each tile, you're going to be able to also activate things on your tile. So you'll see here, if you have the merchant, you can place one surf there. And that's going to wind up turning into, later on, a surf and a coin. So you would wind up sacrificing the surf, but then you would get it back plus a coin. And most of the different tiles have different abilities that you can activate while you are placing your bid. So you're choosing how to use your resources, either bidding or activating tiles. Then you move into the income phase. And when you get to the income phase, then you gain six coins every turn, and then that's where anything that you allocated to your land deeds, like I showed you with the surf, that's when you get those bonuses. Then you move into the auction, which is very simple. Everyone will lift their screen, and you will wind up passing out the various deeds and abilities to the player that bid the highest. If you did not win, you get your resources back. If you did win, then clearly you lose your resources. There are a couple things that actually will happen during this phase as well, because clearly there can be a tie. 
when there is a tie, you go over here and you look at the Empress's favor. And whoever has the favor higher up, they are the tiebreaker. However, anytime someone wins one of the deeds, wherever they are, they then drop to the bottom of the Empress's favor. So you're never there for long. If you had to use the Empress's favor to get a deed or whatever, well, she's irritated with you, and then you move down to the bottom as you go. The other thing is, as these things are claimed, or perhaps not claimed, they will wind up sliding down. So as you play, there will wind up being more and more options out there for you to purchase if for some reason something was not purchased early on. Same thing happens here with these deeds though. These special abilities though, of course, when you get all the way to the end, if it's still there and would have rotated off, then it simply goes and then a new one would be placed out. And that's going to again happen everywhere, even down here with these Empress's Favor cards, which again I have not actually talked about yet. Then the next thing that you do is you are going to fulfill the Empress's bidding. And again, you're going to go through and the person who has the most favor is going to get the first crack at things. And most of how the Empress's Favor is going to work is going to be determined by your player board. So a lot of it's going to make sense in just a minute. So I'm going to, when I zoom back out, I'll explain that. And then anyone who does not, get one of the Empress's favor, they will be able to tithe to the Empress's building projects. So, and what I mean by that is if you want to claim one of these, it's very simple. You have to have on your player board, whatever the, the setup is on the board. So in this case, you would have to have a green deed up and to the left of a red deed, and then you would have to pay whatever it is on the bottom. And that would get you four victory points, and in this case would allow you to help build the Empress's buildings. If you do not get any one of the Empress's favor, you are able to place a brick there to help the Empress build. At the end of the game, whoever has the most here is going to get seven points, second most, three points, third most, one point. Now, let's talk about the individual player board, because that's where the rest of this is going to make sense. So in the game, you have a choice of various Russian families here, and I assume that these were real families. Some of them I know, like the Romanovs. And what you're going to do is you will pick one per player, and that will be your player board. And each player will have a different setup here. And so I mentioned earlier how the Empress's favor works and how you're going to be claiming it based on what is over here. So in this case, if on my board here, I have a red on top of a red. So for example, perhaps I had purchased that and then I simply spend four coins, then I will claim this, which will give me two prestige and will give me the Empress's favor. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of different things that you might need to get in order to claim the Empress's favor. So you're kind of building this up and trying to claim the Empress's favor as you can. But of course, once you put something out, it's pretty much there. And at the same time, you're also dealing with cards like this that are gonna be scored at the end. of. So you're trying to get those as well and then build your board according to that. So a card like this, which is only for a five player game, I shouldn't have it out. For every yellow that's around it, you're gonna get a point. But of course, putting this out is going to wind up filling up almost your entire fief. So if you're doing that, you're probably not getting too many of these Empress favor cards. And then of course, the last thing I just need to point out is how the bidding works. If you recall, we had all of the deeds up here at the top of the board here, and that correlates directly to what you have right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and A and B. And again, just a reminder, you are bidding horses, or you're bidding hussars, or you're bidding money, and it tells you at the top of the deed what it is that you're able to bid for. So what do I like about this game? First off, I do like how the bidding works. It's very clear what you're bidding for, and I like that the different resources are worth different things. And at the same time, what makes it work is these deeds that you're bidding on. A lot of times you are actually bidding for the ability to create more stuff. So for example, this, the grain mill here, if I get that, I can choose not to use my horse to bid. I can use it to put it here and I just earn myself a coin. Or this one here, again, that's how you're able to get 
horses early on, something like this, like that's incredibly powerful. Like you just place a husser down here and get two coins to go with it. So I, I enjoy that balance because if you're doing this, you are not doing this. And it's a very fun balance that you have to play. I also like this building up of your fief and how that correlates to these Empress's favor cards. It is a fun little puzzle that you're figuring out. And especially once you realize that you kind of have to make a choice. Are you going to push for Empress favor cards or are you going to try and do cards like this that are going to give you relatively big points at the end of the game? It is a very delicate balance that you're playing with. And I think that is really clever and really fun. I also like that it's a very simple game to understand. And along with that, I love, love, love that everything you need to know is right here on the inside of your screen. That is one of my favorite things. Everything is here. They did a very good job of putting everything on there. I think that's just great. So what are my quibbles with the game? And I will say that several of these I've been told are going to be adjusted. I will try to notate that if I've been told by the designer that's going to be changed. But the first one is, depending on your angle, this blue and this green can actually look very similar. At this angle and the light that I have now, it's super obvious. But if you don't have as good a light as I have at the moment, or you're looking at an angle, sometimes the blue and the green can look the same. And that can be frustrating, especially if you wind up with a bigger player count and you're looking further across the table. The next thing I'll say is, at the top corner here where it tells you what you can spend for each land deed, it's just too small. Again, same thing. If you have a lot of players, it's going to be really hard to see what it is that you need. Now, both of those I've been told are being adjusted, but as always, I can only comment on, on what I'm seeing now. I don't know that the final version will fix that, but they do say they are working on that. I also will say that while some of the bits of the theming are very clever, like the Empress's favor, and if you don't earn her favor, well, you're gonna you're gonna give her some building materials to build her palace or whatever she's doing. I, I think that's clever. I think that works. I think the way the Empress's favor is constantly rotating on the board again is also very clever because you're always you're in, then you're out, you're in, then you're out. That's well done. But where I think the theme actually falls down a little bit is on these land deeds. Some of these land deeds, it makes a lot of sense. The hovel. Yeah, you put a little money into a hovel and you get a surf out. Great. And okay, so the Great Hall, you're going to sacrifice three, three surfs, basically. They're going to die working for you. Wow, that's dark. And you're going to get a little bit of prestige for it. But some of them that don't really make a lot of sense to me, like the horse trade. So you're going to trade two horses and you're going to get prestige? Why aren't you getting money for trading horses? Or so I, Some of them just don't work, and some of them are kind of generic. Like, what about a horse trade is specifically Russian? Same thing with something like this. A woodcutter is going to give you building supplies. Great, but again, this could be anything. This could be medieval. This could be modern, really. Just say carpenter instead. And all of that... It just doesn't totally jive for me. And the same thing with some of these things, you know, the fortress. So, so what about, what is it about blue that make equals military? I, I don't know. Same thing here. What is it about all the yellow ones that equals granary? Because a lot of these, I'm looking at those horses and Okay, well, the farmland, sure, that makes sense for a granary. They don't all jive, and so that's a little bit of a miss for me. Does it affect the gameplay? Not at all. But if you're looking deeper into the theme, as you dive deep into these land deeds, the theme kind of fades a little bit. Other thing that I'll point out is, while I've only been playing this at two players to shelter in place, I think three and four, five, six players is where this game will shine because it's just not as interesting when you're only bidding against one person. But if you're bidding against a lot of people, that is much more interesting. There's a lot more action going on and suddenly you have to bid for things because you might not have a chance to get something if there's a lot of players out there. And so while, yes, it does work at two-player, I think it's going to work much better at a higher player count. And unfortunately, I have not been able to do that because of shelter in place. 
So there you have it, folks. That is Feudal Endeavor. I think if you like auction games, then this is absolutely one to check out because for me, for my money, there's not a lot of auction games out there that I particularly enjoy. There are some, but not many, and I do enjoy this. I think this game has a lot going for it, and it is definitely worth looking at and checking out. But again, you really have to be into the whole auction game. If you are, check it out. So there you have it, folks. That is Feudal Endeavor. If I made any mistakes in the description, please let me know with the timestamp so I can get that into the Klingon subtitles. As always, if this video was useful, please like, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.